Hi there, my name is Sarah and I'm one of the University of Arizona's HPC consultants and today I'm going to talk a little bit about using Python virtual environments on HPC. So before we get started, you may be wondering, well, what is a virtual environment and uh, why would I need one? That is a good question and one that I will answer with an example. So let's say um, you are in your lab and you're working on a project and you're using Python 3.6 and you've had to pip install some packages to get the tools that you need to do your analyses. You've processed your data, you've come up with some great results, you've written them up into a paper and off it goes. Then later you are working on a second project and that project requires different tools. So maybe you have to use a newer version of Python. So let's say we're using Python 3.6 eight you pip install those tools and then you do your data analysis and then later you get an email going oh um i need to see you replicate the results uh from your first project Ugh. so you go get your data you put it back on hpc you try to run it through your pipeline and oh no uh you can't reproduce those results something is broken so what's happened here well, this actually isn't uncommon with um, software like Python and R, and that's because these rely on package managers and user contributed libraries, which all have interdependencies. So version control can be very difficult. Likely what has happened is using Python 3.8 and newer packages, when you pip installed something, it may have updated package dependencies that your first project was using without your knowledge. That's not great, either for meeting deadlines or for scientific reproducibility in general. So virtual environments are a way to tackle this problem. Um, basically what they are, are individual directories that you create in your account where you can install your packages and then you activate and deactivate these environments so that you can keep them isolated from one another. So let's say taking this example again, instead of just pip installing everything into your account, you create your own virtual environment, pip install your packages there, then when you don't need it anymore, create a new virtual environment and then only use that. And so when you get a request to reproduce your results, just ignore the new one you created and use your old one, which has been uncorrupted by the new one. Okay, so how do we create these virtual environments? Well, I'm gonna head on over to my terminal and I'm gonna start an interactive session on Elgato. And the reason I'm using Elgato is because it's pretty quick and I'm using an interactive session because software modules are not available on the login nodes. I must be on a compute node to load them. So I'm gonna go ahead and load module um, Python 3.8. And the command to create a virtual environment is pretty quick and easy. So it's Python um, 3. Python by itself will default to the system Python 2, so you don't want that. M, V, E, N, V, and then an additional flag, system, site, packages. This just tells, um, this, this just uses the uh, software, or the, excuse me, the libraries that are installed in the software module already. And lastly, what we need to do is create a uh, point to a location on the system where we want to put our uh, virtual environment um, and then give our virtual environment a name. So without a path, it will just create it in your working directory. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, and you should give it something descriptive and maybe say which version of Python you used. So Pi38 example is what I'll use. Um, you could use something like Pi38 and then the name of the project you're working on. Um, whatever works best for your organization and knowing what's in there. All right, and once this is run, you can see that in my working directory, we've created something called Pi38 underscore example. So this is just another directory. And if we look inside, we can see that it has its own bin and library and include directories. And so those are the places where when you pip install packages, that's where they go. So how do we activate this? 
Well, let's take a look in the bin directory. There is a file in here that's called activate. This has all the information that is needed to be added to your environment in order to activate and, and locate this directory. And we will add this stuff to our environment by running the command source. And then we have to point to this activate text file. So in this case, it's pi38 underscore example bin activate. In your case, you would just replace this with the name of your virtual environment. Once your environment is active, you will see its name prepended to your terminal prompt. That way you know that it's active. To deactivate it, you can just run the command deactivate. I want it to be active though, so we'll just turn that back on. Um, and as another note, these virtual environments are only active for your current session. As soon as you log out of the system and log back in, they will be deactivated and you'll just need to manually activate them again. But the environment will remain as long as you don't um, remove it. Okay, and so as the next step, we wanna pip install a package. So we're gonna use the very important um, scientific processing package emoji. And there it goes. Now we're just gonna check where this is installed. So let's do Python 3. And then let's do import emoji. And let's do emoji dot file. And so this shows you the location of the package. So you can see it is in my home in the Python VENV example, Py38 virtual environment that I created. If we go ahead and deactivate this environment and then try running the import emoji again, you'll see that I get a module not found error and that's because my environment is no longer active. So the next thing that we're gonna do is create a batch script that uses this. So on the right hand side of the screen, this is just a text file that I've opened through our open on demand text editor. Um, and I've already included my um, batch direct directives. So that's my um, accounting information. I'm only requesting one minute of, of time and one CPU. So the first thing that we'll need to do is load the Python module that was used to build this virtual environment. This is an important first step. If this is skipped, um, you will encounter some library errors and other not so great stuff. So we're going to run module load Python and then 3.8. Now the next thing that we need to do is run that source command that we used. So um, in this case, we see the source Py38 example. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make this more portable by including the full path to this directory. So if I run the command pwd, you can see that this is my working directory in my home. So I'm gonna do source tilde, that's a shortcut to my home, Python venv example, py38 uh, example, that's the name of my virtual environment, bin activate. So you can see it's exactly the same as that source command that I used earlier. I'm just using a full path to that activate file. And that just makes it so that I can move this batch script around and it doesn't matter where I run it. And then next, I'm going to run the command Python 3. And then if you'll notice um, in my terminal, if I run ls, there is an emoji underscore example file dot pi. So I'm going to run that. It's just a goofy example that prints out a floppy disk. So let's do emoji example.py. And I'm also going to go ahead and copy the full path to this file because I want to make this um, batch script as portable as possible. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and save. And I'm going to run sbatch, venv submit.slurm. That submits my batch job and gives me a job ID back. We'll wait a second, uh, but Elgato is typically pretty quick, so it should show up very soon. And here is our output Slurm file. 
So if I run cat slurm, we can see that I am using a Python virtual environment with a couple of floppy disks from the emoji package. All right, so that's basically how to use virtual environments. Um, you can activate and deactivate them. You can create a number of them in your account um, and just keep your workflows separate so that you can make sure that you can always reproduce your results. If you need any references, uh, you can either rewatch this video or you can go to our online documentation, which can be found at docs.hpc.arizona.edu. Um, under the user guide, you can find an accessing software bit, which has using and installing Python as a sub page. And that also has a link here, um, which is uh, to our GitHub site, which has some examples on using virtual environments. Um, that are very similar to what I did here. So hopefully that helps and I'll see you next time.